So I'm going to pause here and ask each of you, what has, to any example of rejection you've, you've had in life you want to share with us? Baba, I'm going to start with you. What's your, been your own experience with rejection and anything you want to share with us from that? Uh, I need to think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, why are you thinking? Anne, you want to, you have anyone that comes? Like, if both of you don't have, I'll give you my own, then wait for you. Anne, you want to start or you want to have something you want to share? Fine. Okay. And I'm waiting for you. You're still, you need to unmute. Oh, oh okay. Do you have any example? Um, you want me to start first? Any example of rejection? Yes. Something you, you tried doing I, and you don't reject it about. Oh, uh, I think, I don't know. I think my, the rejection actually is maybe for myself. It's a little, you know, that was every day. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't, I mean, I can't right, remember. Let me give you an example. I can't think. Yeah. <laughs> Back in 1985, I met someone and it was love at first sight. Right? But from 19, no, I said 1985. Yeah, 1985. Yeah. And for the next 11 years, I was trying to break through with this person and it never really happened. So I was rejected for 11 years. It's not as if this person doesn't like me. It's not as if this person doesn't love me. But this person probably has some fears of her own that was blocking her. I was young, I was stupid, and I loved the Lord. So that's the only thing that kept me going for 11 years. Not accepting me doesn't mean that it was all our fault. Again, I was young, I was stupid, and I love the Lord. Meaning that each of those th three things mean different things. I love the Lord means I wasn't going to do anything that I thought was going to be unchristianly. If I didn't love the Lord, maybe I'll have broken through. I'll have looked for some way to do it, you know, a toaster, a spinner. If I had to do everything within the fear and love of God I had, within the limit I, know, I knew. I was stupid because I could have done some other things that would have made it happen. But I didn't know any better. See, I'm a very good relationship coach today because I've been through all of that. I mean, I was young. I just didn't know better. But the 11 years of rejection from a love angle had it stole on me. It, it did affect my psyche, my, my, my self-belief, and all of that. I mean, we're friends. We're still friends today, you know, and I love her, you know. But I have no regrets whatsoever, in a sense. But I learned lessons from all of that, you know. And it makes me who I am. It helps me when I counsel people. So that's one example for me. Toba, do you have any oh, that's great. <laughs> I remember it's like you told me something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right, no yeah problem, as you are saying. No, don't worry. Don't worry. You, don't, you don't have to. Reminded. Go ahead. Hello? Are you? Go ahead, yes. Yes, I said as you were talking, I just remember that uh, something I had to similar, though on another aspect anyway, academics this time around. Yeah. So how many years? But while I was seeking for admission, yeah. uh, I actually suffered a lot of rejections. <laughs> yeah, about that, yeah. Like I, I wanted to be yeah. I wanted to come to Uniben at the time. Yeah. Uh, I, I missed it just by a mark, and it was really painful for theology. Then I remember that another time I was supposed to be in Eloy, I was linked up prof, and uh, I also the prof. The prof did not attend to us. He said it's official matter. We should come to the office. So went back to the office, actually went to the office before, but you know, it was not, it was not on seat. So someone has to describe the house to us. And then later he didn't attend to us at home. We went back to the office. Today we went to office, he came in, he said we should wait. We waited and waited. 
until he was to leave the office that day. And he just left without ever attending to us. And that was the last day I saw him till he died. It's late now. And, uh, but interestingly, interestingly, I remember that when I was eventually going to get back, as at that time, I lost hope completely that I'm not going to allow him again. So I faced an event back, and that was the time I missed it by Mark. At another time, I can't remember what happened, like two or three times, I was supposed to be in Unibank, and I couldn't. The offers, I was just being rejected. Until later, I had to turn back and get to Elohim. And uh, eventually, I got there. I got the admission to God's glory that time before I later finished the same geology there. So I'm it just reminded me, but I think my, my, own main, my own main concern most of the time, sir? Go ahead, I'm listening to you. Hello? I'm listening to you, go ahead. Okay, so but my concern most times, okay, I saw my concern most times has always been fear of rejection. Yes. The number of times I have to do, I think somebody called it analysis paralysis. I have to do a lot of analysis before I move out, before I take a step on yes. something. And I think that has actually delayed a lot of actions and the uh, probably progress, which is contrary to what uh, somebody is saying here, that it's better you go, that even the worst that will happen is they will tell you a no. Yes. I'm trying to build up. <laughs> Maybe I have to yeah, continue. Well, then we're all great, yes. I'll begin to. Yes. That's the reason why we're having this, this discussion. You know, I used to be like you. Today, I'm not. I'm, I've grown past that. You know? But I used to be there. I used to do a lot of analysis. Wow, that people were investing in the stock market. I was just doing analysis. What was this price? What was this price? But who were making money all around me? But I was doing analysis. You know? Then I've gone past that. Right? It's part of growth. And that's part of one of the reasons why we're having this discussion is to help each one of us go past that. You know, you have to face life. You have to take risks. If there's no risk, there's no life. If there's no risk, you cannot get security, right? Life is about taking risks. It just has to be calculated risk. You know, once you've done it, it, you've done enough, it, it's, a, it's the 80 20 to go, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. You just do the best you know to do. Then you make your decision. You will never be perfect by just doing analysis. You will never grow by just doing analysis. The only way you will grow, the only way you will exercise yourself towards perfection is by taking action, not doing analysis. The essence of analysis is to take action. If you don't take that action, you can never grow. You take some actions, you will fail. None of your actions will succeed. But you learn from your failure. You get, you can never learn if you don't fail. Some of them will succeed, some of them will fail. But you cannot stay in analyzing and not doing anything. You think you are going to grow. It cannot happen. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Now, we only take action, right? So let's, let's just go to the next one here. So, um, so when you when you face rejection, this Charles de Gaulle telling us that. Uh, you don't lose yourself because you have a rejection, right? Because when you get a rejection, typically we, we start beating ourselves, right? Oh, why did I do that? Oh, I didn't do this one. Oh, one more, oh, just one mark. Oh, it might be that question I did not answer. Oh, it is this, ah, la, la, you know? You, because rejection tends to hit you with self-doubt, right? And the, 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 Natural response is to start beating yourself, right? But that is not the way forward, right? It's to embrace the situation and learn the lesson. Beating yourself is useless. You beating yourself, you are beating the only asset you have. You are the asset, right? It's to embrace the situation, come into harmony with whatever the situation is, right? 
when people reject you is one or both or for both is either for one reason or for both either they have a problem or you have a problem or both of you have a problem right so it's not always that it's your problem that the person rejected the person just rejected maybe because it's sad maybe it's just a yeah. sadist maybe i just made up his mind he will not accept anybody that day maybe the person has fears they might, ask, they might have nothing to do with you so it's for you to come in harmony with the situation and ask the questions. You do. You are not. You do, it doesn't mean that you have to be wrong for there to be a rejection. And it could also be you. Maybe you didn't take the right step. Maybe you went too early. Whatever. The important thing to learn from maybe rejection is what went wrong, right? When you you learn that and you grow with it. The worst thing you can do also is to assume that nothing is amiss. That it's just a bad wind that blew. If you just, just think like that, you will not grow either. You don't. You, you cannot grow from a denial or from any challenge of life by denial. You have to accept the facts just as they are, and then work with them. Right? Again, it could be because of the person. It could be because of you. It might not. It might even be not nothing to do with both of you. Maybe it's just the environment. But important thing is to learn the lesson and grow with it rather than be stuck with it and be having regrets. Regrets won't do you any good. It's learn the lesson and move forward. Right? Yeah. 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 So here also we have uh, Marcos uh, um, Tulio Cicero telling us about that uh, you, there's a need to reflect. If, any, if you have a rejection, it's it's not about the uh, braggado. It's, it's about reflecting, understanding the issues at play, and uh, and making the right decision concerning the situation. Right. So it's reflecting enough to say what went wrong, what could I do better next time. You know, then whatever results you get from all of that, make a, a decision as to what you will do differently. The situation has to repeat itself, right? And that we, we saw, uh, I don't know, so come back to Ivy. So here also we have uh, Obert Humphrey telling us that, that uh, we, you need to know who you are and be who you are. I mean, no rejection should ever make you want to change who you are. Do, do you understand what I just said? Do you agree with it? What's your challenge? What I just said? Yeah, yeah. Your basic personality will, is all you will ever have. And your, 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 your treasure, your wealth is tied to that. If you change that, then you change the only asset God has given you. There's only one asset God has given you to win in life. It is yourself, nothing else. All the treasures you need, all the ammunition you need to win in life is yourself, nothing else. So if you, if you disown yourself, then you disown the only thing God has given you to win in life. Our job is to discover ourselves because in discovering ourselves we are discovering God's endowment for us to win in life. All right. And this this emphasizes also confidence, right? Our understanding ourselves brings confidence in us. And confidence is what opens the way for you to win in life. Even if you don't know what you're doing, sir. Who open the door for someone that is confident. I'll give you an example. When I came in into the airport, you know, this time I came in, I just typically I would have people in my office meet me inside, but there was nobody. As I was coming with my bags, I saw some places where they were checking. I just walked a bit away from them and just did as if I knew what I was doing. I was holding my bag and greeting everybody. I was greeting them, hello, how are you? I mean, 
they, they, they thought I was a worker there, you know, I just walk confidently. Nobody called me because I was the one greeting before anybody greeted me, you know. But, and I've seen that happen in several instances, several places, right? You need confidence to win in life. They don't give seats to people who, don't, who are not confident. Confidence is a new sexy. If you are confident, even if you are ugly, people will think you are handsome. They will think you are beautiful. If you wear a rag right now, you wear it confidently, you will see people will start copying you and wearing the same rag. Confidence puts the shine on everything. I'm not saying that you should be stupidly a braggado. We're talking about confidence that is coming from within you. People can see that this is, is not fake. It puts the shine on you and you need it to win the battles of life. And the way to get it is understanding yourself because confidence comes from within. It doesn't come from without. Braggado comes from without. Confidence comes from within. It's a sense of congruency and peace from within that gives you confidence. So you just, this is just summarizing everything we've said so far. You know, the fact that when you have a rejection, don't beat yourself. Don't put yourself down. Don't give up. Don't lose your spirit. Go back and, and ask yourself, what is my purpose? What do I know of myself? What is the inside of me saying that what's the vision? What's the push that's coming from within me? And it's important for you to know that, right? For instance, I have a new business that's been set up. And somehow what God is moving in my heart as the intent for that business is to develop the village that is tied to where my business is. Now I'm trying to buy some more land and someone is saying that, oh, why are you putting it close to the village? You should go to some place that is more convenient because he has a tarred road. So how do I make the decision whether to buy close to the village or the tarred road? I have to remember the reason why I'm there. The reason why I'm there is to develop that village. So I cannot be running away from Montage Road. If I run away from Montage Road, guess what I'm running away from? I'm running away from the place of my grace. My grace is found in the intent for which I am there. God will support me for as long as I'm tied to the intent for which I am there. If I move away from that intent and go to the easy place, guess what does not go with me? The grace of God. Right, I'll be running away right. from the devil that I know to an angel I don't know, who is probably a worse devil. But the thing about his grace will not follow me. When you mm -hmm. understand your, your purpose, you understand your place of grace. Right. All right. So you know your why. Is, you know your why. That's a key word. Is know your why. Once you know your why and you stay connected to your why. That is your place of grace. That's a place where God will meet you. If you go away from there, you are your own. But the more connected you are to your why, the more connected you are to God. That's where God comes to Joshua and says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. When you stay close to your why, your intent, fine. that is a place where God supports you. Right? And that place is, you've got a witness from within you, right? Everything we've talked about, we've said that it has to flow from within you, from within you. And that's supporting what Lao Tzu says here. The inner is the foundation of the outer. It's not the outer, is the foundation of the inner. The foundation for everything you do in life, all the battles you fight in life, comes from inside of you. There must be a peace within you. There must be an agreement within you because that is the source of your power. Right? So you want to keep the source of your power in all that you do. It is you. You are the one God has endowed. And here we're just looking at two quotes from Kobe Bryant, also talking about not giving up, right? He says, the moment you give up is the moment you let someone else win. If you give up, then someone else will take your place, right? That shine that God wants you to bring. You are, you are keeping away from people and God cannot always use someone else, right? It says, we don't quit, we don't cower, we don't run, we endure and conquer. So whatever it is that is facing you, you endure 
and conquer. There's a time. So you look at Joseph's case. Joseph had to endure. You see him each time he stabilized. There's a peace within. He, he's working. That's the only reason why he was made master. Because he, he, he embraced the chaos of his life. It was chaos to be torn away from his family. But he did not stay there complaining and, and uh, denying the reality he was facing. He had to embrace the situation every time and live the best he could in every, every season of his life. That's why God was with him, promoting him. Same thing, same thing with us. Whatever place we find ourselves, right, is not something to complain about, but to bring ourselves to that place and be the best we can where we find ourselves. So life is not about wishing. It's about doing. It's about being, right? Here also, Lazo repeats this one and says, the sage puts his own views behind, so ends up ahead. He stays a witness to life, so he endures it. I will have Jim Rohn's own today. Jim Rohn will say that we should be a student of life and people. That's the way you grow. Be a student of life and people, right? A sage does not say it has to be the wisdom I have so far, but it's understanding life by the experience of life, right? Put that together with what Albert Einstein says. He says, I have seen further, I have gone further because I'm sitting on the shoulders of those that have gone before me. I'm learning from their experience. I'm learning from, from all that has happened to them, right? And that's the way we, we, we live life also, right? When it's not about just what I think, but I'm facing reality in what I see and asking the questions to getting a better understanding. Yeah, this is the last quote here and every other thing we'll discuss as we try to close here. It says, complete the task at hand. Be selfless in your actions. This is the way of heaven. This is the way of heaven. So whatever it is that God has put in your hands, your place is to complete it, right? And do it to the best of your knowledge, right? And the, here we'll tie back to the book in chapter one. You see, I may always going back, always willing to, 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 to fight for what she believed within, even though uh, he was being, she was being rejected, but she was ready to try again. And the only reason she was trying again is because she believed deep within in what she was doing. If she didn't believe it, she would have given up. So it's up to us to find something that we believe in, find something that is tied to who we are, that we are convinced is where God will have us go. Because that's the only thing that will be able to keep you from giving up or being discouraged when people talk bad against what you are saying or what you are trying to sell, right? There are two more points I want to bring up, but before I do that, let me open the floor for yeah. Toba seems to have knocked off the internet. And anything you want to say before I close with two more points? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean that's right. Um, we should not feel like it's... Um, People, people will always not believe in what you're doing. So, um, if, if you don't try, you will never know that you can do something. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, like you said, like our purpose is self-discovery. So, in, in order to, in order to uh, know, in order to find the things that we like to and, and the things that we are, it's just okay. And the things that we are, um, that God has called us to, we have to self, it's, it's, it comes through self-discovery. It comes through self-discovery. And which is why some of times we're frustrated and we're like analyzing everything and don't want, do not want to try different things to see, if, you know. So uh, that's where we, we get self-discovery when we're willing to try. We're willing to try the other stuff, other things that were, that are not, that, you know, that are, that um, I mean, we, we like to put ourselves in the shell, but we need to in the box. But we need to step out of the out of the box and do things that do different things or do some something new. That's the only way we can be able to self discover what it is that we are that we, that we can do. What else that we can do? I, I, yeah, I don't know if you understand. Yeah, yeah, I understand perfectly. Perfectly. Until you do, you won't know. Right. right. Until you do, you won't know the other questions you have. You, you right. Am I right? Right. 
Now, just for right. example, like I said, for my business here now, we have created, we are creating more businesses. We went there just for farm. Today we have, we have, we have a brick molding that we are we're coming up with. We have a poultry. We have a quarry that we're working on. Will and you employ me? Eh? Will you give me a job? Ah, I can't pay you yet. To, you know, <laughs> but yeah. No, it's your business also now. We're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to be into some export. So we'll see if that, that ties. We have a big export plan. You know? Wow. Okay. But it's all growing every day. But right. I wouldn't know this. It didn't start. Right. Right. You know? So, yeah, life is a, is a whole lot of discovery. That, that's the way, the way you grow. But you won't know until you start. You know? Right. We've taken so much time. We are supposed to be going to church. So, let me quickly close. Uh, two things, you know. The other thing is, she now talked about the reason why she might have been rejected so many times is because what she was doing was no girl. Right, yes. it was something they were not they were doing something that the people that are supposed to accept it were not used to that line. So that's some of the reason people reject is because maybe what you are coming up with, they are not comfortable with it. It's something different from what they are used to. You know, it's like you want to join a choir, and as far as the person that's supposed to uh, 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 interview you or, or, or uh, what do you call it? Uh, What's that word now? Audition you. As far as it's concerned, a woman cannot sing. And you're a woman wanting to sing. No matter how good you sing, the person will not hear you. You enter one year and go because it's being blocked by his own paradigm. So you see, that's nothing to do with you. You are okay. But that person is working with a paradigm that does not accept you. So it's not because you are wrong. You just not because you are wrong, but because he has a wrong paradigm. That's why we say that some rejections have nothing to do with you. It just has to do with that person. And that's the problem she was having. So she was coming with something that was novel to the beauty industry. So it was difficult for them to understand her and understand that she was sellable, right? Also, if she had analyzed all of this earlier, it would have reduced the number of rejections she had. The only thing she needed to do was to understand that what she was bringing to the table is not common. So it's not, if she goes the normal way, it will not be accepted. She has to help the people to see things the way she was seeing it, right? So that's what happens when you embrace the situation and you analyze it. Instead of you, you can't be doing the same, it, it's, and I was saying it's insanity. If you do the same thing over and over and expect a different result, that's insanity. You have to learn from every rejection and see what you can tweak to make it better, right? So that's one thing, uh, one key thing from my experience we can take away. And uh, I think that's all, that's all. We, we can close here if you have no other question. Uh, no, no other question. Mm -hmm. All right.